It's coming from the walls. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Random Distractions Home Theater Update video. And in my previous video about the Buckeye Amp, I mentioned how that was kind of an unconventional way to go, uh, specifically because it's, you know, it's a one-person uh, company that's building these amps. Uh, they're Class D, that kind of thing. Uh, but in that video, I mentioned that I was finally going to get some Atmos height speakers, uh, but that I was going to do it in an unconventional way as well. This is the Dayton Audio DAEX 32 EP 4 4 ohm 40 watt audio exciter, <laughs> which is a very long name, but what this does, if you're not familiar with it, is um, it attaches to a surface, uh, basically kind of like this, and it does uh, usually have an adhesive on here, uh, but this one uh, I had to remove it. Uh, but it, it attaches to the sur to surface, uh, whether that's you know glass or um, drop ceiling tiles, I've seen them used like that, and the vibrations that this causes uh, produces sound, and so it basically turns a, and in almost any object into a speaker. So I hooked this up to just a little bitty amp and uh, just to kind of give a quick demo to kind of show the difference. Uh, so this is with it not attached to anything, and you can kind of hear a little bit. I'll put it close to the microphone here. But say this is the box that the it actually came in when you uh, put it next to something. It now makes a lot more noise. And depending on how you put this on here, it'll sound different. So that's an audio exciter. And I got into them because I was receiving recommendations from YouTube for uh, different videos uh, where they were putting them like on cardboard, plexiglass, uh, some drop ceiling tiles, among other different things. But it wasn't until I came across someone that ha was using them on some drywall. Uh, they were, I think, redoing their bathroom and they wanted to try to put some music into the bathroom, uh, but not have any like actual speakers uh, because, uh, you know, of the wife approval factor. And so they decided to go this route and that sparked an idea. Could I use these for high channels? I tried, of course, doing a search on YouTube to see if anybody else had done something similar, and unfortunately I didn't come across any, uh, but I did come across a couple of different forums uh, and things like that where people mentioned uh, doing that or wondering if they could do that, um, and some of them mentioned that they had done it. Uh, they didn't say how successful it was, but I thought because it, you know, it seemed like a good theory that uh, why not give it a try. I originally wanted to shoot uh, for having all six, you know, channels, so uh, the front, the middle, and the rear, and I knew that probably one exciter was not going to be enough, uh, and actually the person in the bathroom uh, remodel was using four uh, exciters per channel, uh, but I thought maybe two would be enough, and so that's what I decided to go with. I ended up ordering some stuff from Amazon and some from Parts Express. Uh, depending on where I went, uh, some of the things were a little bit cheaper. First, let me go over the unboxing of what I ordered. From Amazon, I got a two gang wall plate, banana speaker plugs, and a six channel speaker wall plate. The banana plugs were just what came up as having good ratings, and I have to say that I was impressed with them. They worked better than the ones that I bought last time. The speaker wall plate also felt and looked pretty good. The orange wall plate was just the wall plate. Now for the items from Parts Express. I ordered 100 feet of in-wall speaker cable, some crimp terminals, and of course the Dayton Audio Exciters. A total of 12 of them. So that's what I ordered. And if you are curious as to the cost uh, at the time of the orders, uh, from Parts Express it was $301.96, and from Amazon it was $59.50 for a total of $361.46. Now, considering that uh, some high channel speakers actually cost about that much just for one speaker, I figured this was kind of an inexpensive experiment. As I mentioned earlier, I was originally hoping to do a DOT6 setup, uh, but when I started to calculate how much wire I was going to need, uh, I realized, oh, you know what, I also need wire from the wall to the receiver uh, and stuff like that, and, uh, and the 100 foot cable was just not going to be long enough to do all six channels. 
Um, also, when I was looking up where to put them, uh, I was checking out the Dolby guides. And for a five bed uh, layer setup, they actually only suggest doing a dot four, or they only showed a dot four. Um, so I figured, you know what, I'll just go with uh, a dot four then. With a plan in mind, I went ahead and prepped the speaker cable and the audio exciters. Here's what that looks like with the speaker wire cable labeled at both ends and terminals crimped. I also wrapped the end with some wire sleeve and lots of electrical tape so that it would stay together and hopefully be easy to pull through the wall. For each exciter channel, I set them up in a series so that they would become 8 ohm, 80 watt speakers. Here is the front height set and the rear height set. So I had everything as prepped as I thought I could be and I did this the day before the installation and unfortunately while I was bummed that I couldn't do the dot six uh, I think uh, you know I was okay with the dot four since that was the uh, recommended setup anyway from Dolby. And so the next day of course it was time for installation. First was to cut a hole for the wall plate. Luckily the wall plate had little holes on it that you could use to mark the wall to know how big the hole needed to be. I decided to make the hole next to the outlet which would make it easier to find where I needed to look for the cable in the attic. I did have to cut it a little bigger than that though, so it wasn't exact, and as you can see I apparently didn't cut it level either. I did have a fishing wire so pushed it up to the attic. Two and a half hours later I was able to cut a hole and find the cable to pull it down from the attic. I removed the electrical tape and cut part of the wire sleeve to expose my labels and started to strip the wires so that I could install the banana plugs. These were the screw-on type and, like I mentioned, was really impressed by the feel. They looked pretty good, too. They had a really nice tight fit to the back of the speaker wall plate. I placed the front height to the top and rear height to the bottom. With the back connected, I screwed in the plates with the speaker terminals in. I then screwed in the cover. Last step was to connect the speaker cables from the wall to the receiver, which would be powering the speakers. So that was the installation, and of course in video it looks rather smooth, but uh, it did, like I said, it did take me two and a half hours just to get the uh, wire from the attic down to that hole. And part of that was just because um, I did find where the power cable was going down to the outlet, so finding it wasn't that bad. But the location where that was, it looks like they had double stacked the studs. So I tried to drill through it and I killed a battery and then I realized I didn't, my drill bit was not long enough so it wasn't even reaching down to the end. Uh, but then I figured out that uh, next to that I could actually drill a hole uh, kind of from the side and that's when I was able to finally uh, find the uh, fishing line. And unfortunately, you know, I, there's not much um, uh, footing up there so it's kind of hard moving up in the attic anyway. Um, so part of that is also why it took so long. I did do a quick test though just to make sure that I was getting sound from them uh, before I put everything uh, back to where it needed to be and everything seemed to be working uh, at least I was hearing sound from it uh, but I did need to run Arc Genesis to, to calibrate the system. Unfortunately this is where I ran into my first problem. Um, so Arc Genesis was you know uh, checking out all the speakers and it got to the front height speakers which went well uh, but then it got to the left uh, rear height speaker and I'm like that doesn't sound as loud as the others and sure enough uh, Arc Genesis felt the same and so it gave me an error. When I was putting those in place I did actually wonder about them uh, because the location that I had picked was actually really close to the seam where the two drywalls meet. Uh, and what I learned from watching some of the other exciter videos is that placement on the whatever you're putting them on uh, does come into play as far as the sound output. Um, so I kind of wondered about that. And uh, so I decided that, you know, I need to move them and put them somewhere else and see if that helps. Uh, or maybe, you know, something was wrong with my connection. Uh, unfortunately, because they do have a, the adhesive, uh, when I try to take them off, it kind of took a little bit of the drywall with it. Um, and so I had to replace them with two new ones. Uh, but since I had gone from the dot six to the dot four, I did have some extra ones. Uh, so I was able to adjust them and put them somewhere else. The one thing that I will say about those crimp terminals is that they hang on really tight. Uh, Cause this is one of the speakers that was up there and I had to remove. And when I was trying to unplug it from the actual speaker cable, um, it actually brought the terminal with it. So uh, I'll try to zoom in there and see so you can see that this is just the wire, not the actual terminal anymore. 
So before I decided to run Arc Genesis, I went ahead and retested uh, to see what they sounded like, and they did seem to be louder than before, so I was hopeful. Um, and luckily, <laughs> Arc Genesis did run and was able to get through it uh, without, an issue, uh, without any errors anyway. Uh, but the one thing that I will say about that is that um, when it was measuring them, uh, I noticed that it would only reach about 60 dB or so uh, for the sound level. So they're not very loud, uh, at least compared to the rest of the speakers, of course. Once it was complete, it was time to check out and see how they worked in practice. They worked pretty good. A scene that immediately came to mind was from the Batman. Uh, when uh, the Batman is chasing Penguin and he finally catches up to him and he causes his car to flip. Uh, during the scene where you're inside the car with the penguin, penguin uh, you actually do hear sound from above you uh, as it's kind of turning and turning. Uh, and then when it finally lands, there's the creak of the car settling and that is coming from above as well. Here's that clip and the microphone is in the main listening position, but pointed towards the ceiling. Another scene that I've heard is good for this is the John Wick movie and the final boss fight uh, where it starts to rain. And during that scene, it does feel like the rain is coming from above you. You hear the thunder crashes and all that stuff. Um, and so here again is the, that clip uh, with the microphone pointed at the ceiling. And to kind of give an idea of what they're doing, I went ahead and did the same clip, uh, but I turned off the amps for the front stage and for the surrounds. Uh, so this will only be the height speakers and the subwoofers. I didn't do any recordings of this, but I recently had some friends over to watch uh, the movie Gladiator. Uh, somebody in the group had not ever seen it before and we're like, what? Uh, so we got to check this out. Uh, although to be honest, I wasn't expecting very much uh, from the height speakers just because of the time period uh, that you know it was based on. I'm like, I couldn't think of like how they would use height speakers, uh, but there was a couple of scenes that stood out. So the first scene where something happened in the height speakers was during that first uh, big battle uh, where they shoot those uh, fire arrows. Um, and there's certain sections where you do hear those arrows kind of flying above you. And uh, during some of the quieter like forest scenes uh, in that same battle, uh, and even in other ones, you can kind of hear birds uh, chirping uh, up from above you. Um, then later on, there was another scene where uh, a storm was coming and kind of like the John Wick a little bit, uh, you could hear the thunder and you know stuff like that from above. And then there was a couple of scenes, uh, if you watch the movie, they uh, end up in Rome in the Colosseum. And there's a couple of scenes that are shot under the Colosseum where the gladiators are. And you could hear from above you, you know, what's going on, uh, the crowd and uh, different fights and things like that. Uh, those were coming from above as well. So are these better than the dedicated Atmos uh, height speakers, you know, like the ones that you put on the wall or in your ceiling? I have no idea. But what I can say with my personal experience with this setup, uh, it really has increased the level of immersion uh, in my home theater system. And so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some different movies uh, that do a good job of using the height speakers. I will say there's also a slight 
just very slight cool factor to them uh, because when I originally told uh, my friends that came over that I had put in height speakers uh, but that you know the sound was actually coming from the drywall <laughs> in the ceiling they were kind of like what that's so cool so there's that too with that said though, I, I think the next thing that I want to try to do is to add two additional uh, exciters to the channels. Um, uh, in the one that I saw where the guy was remodeling his bathroom and he put those on there, he actually used four uh, exciters per channel as well and his output seemed to be really loud. Um, and like I said, when I was doing Arc Genesis, uh, it was lower. Uh, and because of that, it actually did turn down the target uh, level lower for everything. As an example, here is the Arc Genesis results from the front left speaker uh, before adding the height speakers. And now here it is after adding the height speakers. Don't get me wrong, it does still get very loud, um, and, but instead of like being at negative 20 on the receiver, I'm either at like negative 10 or negative 5 now. Um, and one thing that I uh, remember from when I uh, went to boot camp for learning how to run sound for our church is that uh, sound is additive. So even though the, you know, the five bed layer speakers are turned down, adding those four additional speakers from above adds to the overall sound and makes it you know, seem louder than what it's showing, I guess. I am hoping that by adding those two additional exciters to the channels will help uh, because one of the things that uh, with them is that the whatever you put them on needs to be sturdy but yet not super thick and drywall is you know fairly thick um, and a little sturdier than probably some of the other stuff that's uh, been used for it um, so it does kind of need that extra help the one thing that i'm hoping that some of you can help me with and hopefully you can leave uh, the a comment uh, down below is the wiring because uh, i know for in order to maintain the 8 ohm load they'll have to be plugged in in series and then parallel so here's my thought i connect two in a series with a wire from the negative of one to the positive of the other creating one set and repeat the step for the other two to create the second set but then connect the open positive from the first set to the open positive of the second set and do the same for the open negative from the first set to the open negative of the second set. Does that sound right? Let me know in the comments. So like I said, this is probably not a conventional method uh, to add height speakers to your home theater uh, system, uh, but I kind of thought it was kind of interesting and you know, if anything else, then at least I would have the wiring uh, if I did want to add uh, traditional speakers uh, up there instead of using these things. Uh, but I am kind of curious as to what hap will happen with adding the two additional uh, exciters to the channels uh, to see if that would help uh, raise the, the volume. Um, although, like I said, it, you know, it still does get plen plenty loud and the immersion is there for sure as far as hearing things from above me. Uh, and things like that. Anyway, that's all that I have for this video. I would definitely appreciate a like course on this one and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next one drops. And until then, I hope you have a good one.